Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the highly awaited Transformers Netflix Earthrise Deluxe Class Bumblebee, a figure that I know many of you, myself included, have been eagerly awaiting its announcement, let alone its release. And finally, we can add a Bumblebee to our War for Cybertron trilogy. And believe me, this figure definitely lives up to the expectations and the hype that has been building up ever since the War for Cybertron trilogy line first launched. Before we take a look at the actual figure himself, we're first of all going to take a look at his accessories. So for those of you who are familiar with the Deluxe Class Earthrise Cliff Jumper and even the Generation Selects Hubcap, you will all know what this accessory is. This is the same accessory that we got with those two previous figures. However, this time I believe it to have been done in a lot nicer of a colour scheme. You can see that as opposed to a really shiny silver, they've gone for a more gunmetal, more metallic, realistic look. And I think that it makes the bazooka look so much cooler for it. You can see you've got the struts here at the front, which you can indeed actually add on to the Bumblebee figure as skis, much like you could do with the cliff jumper. But just the paintwork on this I think looks awesome. You can indeed break this up into individual components. I'll demonstrate that more when we get him into robot mode. Something to note with this particular Bumblebee is that he doesn't have any ports exposed within his vehicle mode, which I actually am a huge fan of. With Cliff Jumper, he had this huge circular port in the center of his vehicle mode, and I think that if they would have done that here for Bumblebee, it would have absolutely ruined the awesome looking VW Bug alt form. So there is another way to integrate the weapon into the vehicle mode, but I'll showcase that later on in the review. Just very quickly bringing in for a comparison, here we have the original Earthrise Cliff Jumper's blaster, and you can see in what I was talking about in regards to the paint apps with the new Netflix Bumblebee it's a lot more darker a lot more gunmetal in terms of the color scheme than opposed to the more shiny silver that we got with Cliff Jumper and then if we turn under to the underside you can see that with Cliff Jumper this piece here was picked out in a nice silver paint as well whereas on Bumblebee this time it's just a solid black plastic but nonetheless still a really awesome looking blaster let's move on to the main event himself so now taking a look at the brand new Earthrise Netflix Bumblebee, here we have him fully transformed up into his astounding looking Volkswagen Beetle mode. I truly think that Hasbro and Takara have done a magnificent job in replicating Bumblebee's original G1 form here in a plastic release. You can see here that the entire vehicle mode is indeed painted, which I was so surprised. You can see the metallic shine that it does indeed have, and I was only able to tell that the entire vehicle mode was indeed painted, as when you flip under to the underside and you take a look at the moulded plastic yellow arms that Bumblebee has you can really begin to tell the difference so that is super cool to see that they did apply a lot of paint application to this figure and the color is completely matched all the way throughout the vehicle so there are no areas of which are sculpted in a different color plastic so that it looks rather ugly much like we got on the Earthrise Ironhide this is truly one of the best looking vehicle modes to come out of the War for Cybertron trilogy you can see as we turn to the back end of the vehicle mode we've got details such as the rear lights all of this Volkswagen detailing here at the back we've got the bumper I am in love with the transparent blue plastic that they've used here for the rear windows the side windows as well as the front windscreen I think that all looks incredible and the actual clear plastic is indeed a separate piece which is screwed on to the back of this section which I'll demonstrate more once we remove the backpack but that just helps to avoid having any mismatch of color schemes and I really hope that this is something we can see on some of the future releases another thing that I also really like is that you can see no robot mode kibble visible when you look into the interior of the vehicle mode that is how clean this vehicle mode is quite honestly you probably wouldn't even expect this figure to transform upon first glance. We've got some nice details here such as some silver window wipers, the VW Bug logo here at the hood of the car as well as some vents for where the hood of the car would be. The front headlights here are painted in a nice silver. We once again have got the front bumper, the Autobot insignia. This almost looks like a smaller version of the first release of the Masterpiece version and you can see the hubcaps have also been picked out in a nice silver detail with the VW logo in them. So overall in terms of vehicle mode, absolutely astounding one of the best vehicle modes that we have ever gotten out of both siege and earthrise we've even got one of the side view mirrors there which is sculpted really nicely no paint bleeds on this whatsoever just an amazing looking vehicle mode it does also roll really nicely as well which is fantastic to see so overall i'm so happy with how this particular release turned out and now turning to a Transformers Earthrise vehicle mode size comparison, here I have Bumblebee compared next to some of the other Earthrise Autobots, and I've got to say that especially here in robot mode, I think that the scale works perfectly. Just bringing in Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee here for a comparison, you can see that in vehicle mode they are completely different figures, you honestly wouldn't be able to tell that they share identical engineering, they look completely different, so the entire shell of Bumblebee has been drastically changed, there are no pieces, at least in vehicle mode that have been reused, it is a slightly different story once we get into robot mode, 
side. But you can see as we flip under to the underside, you can definitely see the similarities in terms of the engineering. And you can see some of the identical components that they have used for robot mode. But for vehicle mode, the shells are completely different. Bumblebee is ever so slightly shorter than Cliff Jumper in vehicle mode. So if you already thought Cliff Jumper was a small deluxe in vehicle mode, definitely be prepared to give the title of the smallest Earthrise Deluxe to this upcoming Bumblebee. Comparing him here to the deluxe class Earthrise Ironhide, these two here are really on different ends of the spectrum. You can see that we have the largest deluxe and here we have the smallest deluxe and you can just see how drastically different they both are in terms of their scale. But once again, I think that it works really, really nicely. It's really nice to see Hasbro keeping the continuity of scale across the board for the Earthrise figures, both in their vehicle modes and in their robot modes. And then just quickly here comparing him to the Earthrise Deluxe RC, you can see that once again, she is a lot larger, especially in terms of her width and in terms of her overall length when compared to Bumblebee. And comparing Bumblebee here to Earthrise Optimus Prime, you can see that I think that these two scale quite nicely with one another. I do believe Optimus should perhaps be slightly bigger, but for me, I think that this scale works fairly nicely. And of course, for those of you who are asking, you can indeed store Bumblebee within the trailer, conceal the trailer up, and you can have Optimus Prime rolling out with Bumblebee safely stored away in his trailer. Now turning to the transformation of Bumblebee, as this figure is an incredibly heavy retool of that of the Earthrise Cliff Jumper, the transformation is identical to that previous figure. So to begin with, of course, we're going to want to start at the rear end of the vehicle and just try our best to remove this whole component. However, before we do that, I first of all want to show you how you can now incorporate the weapon into the vehicle mode. So to do this, you want to raise these sections up all the way, hinging this back, so that we have these now flush, just hinged all of these pieces back. You want to hook this over the top and then compress this, angle this section back and inside here you can see a peg. You're going to want to deploy this peg and then bringing out our huge bazooka weapon, you can see that there is a slot there that you'll want to align up with the peg and just slide that into place. And there we have Earthrise Bumblebee utilizing his bazooka weapon in vehicle mode. And quite honestly, I think that this is quite a cool look for Bumblebee. Definitely evokes back to a stealth mode. And I can for sure see him deploying this type of weapon when in combat. So I really do hope that this is a look that we see Bumblebee deploy in the Earthrise Chapter 2. And it's just a different form of weapon storage and avoids us from getting a huge hole placed into the backpack, breaking up the overall sculpt of the VW Bug. So just removing this weapon off to the side, you're going to want to wriggle out the backpack once again, as this is very similar to Cliff Jumper. Unfortunately, we do still have the parts forming aspect. As I mentioned in my Earthrise Ironhide review, I've now come to accept that perhaps this is the new normal for Transformers, so I won't be dwelling on this too much. But whilst we're here, you can see that this entire blue piece of plastic is indeed a separate piece to the rest of the sculpt. So it is screwed in in there, meaning that we now have a complete coherent look for the color scheme and that this isn't just painted over clear plastic. Sometimes when you have a clear piece of plastic that has transparent windows and Hasbro do spray paint over the top of it, it can sometimes look messy and sometimes the color match is is not correct meaning that it looks out of place when compared next to the rest of the vehicle but you can see here that as this is a separate piece that is completely avoided and honestly I'm so glad to see that here. Setting this piece off to the side now and turning to the transformation of Bumblebee what you're going to do here is just untab this whole section here remove this and then unhook these pieces you can see that they do tab in via this tab and this slot and then you're going to want to repeat the same process here for this side so just attach that Take the wheel here, fold this down, fold this section down as well, lift this piece up and then with this section you're going to want to fold this in and this tab here will peg into any of the four grooves that are present on the wheel. So you just want to align that up and snap that into place and then of course repeat the same process here for the opposite side. So align that all up. Now we turn to this section. What I like to do here is extend all this and at the same time bring the arms around. So extend all this, rotate the waist around, take this section here, pull this forwards collapse this section in, take this, snap that into place, and then the arms will lock into place via this clip and this tab. So you're just going to want to overlap them and they will solidify in there really nice and securely. And that is essentially the transformation complete for our Earthrise Bumblebee. But then if you want for a more complete look and you want to fill out the backpack, you're going to want to utilize this port that we saw earlier on when I showcased how to attach the bazooka and then just peg this into the back. And here we have Earthrise Bumblebee fully transformed up into robot mode looking absolutely terrific.
So now taking a look at Bumblebee here in his new Earthrise form, I can honestly say that this is probably one of the funnest G1 inspired Bumblebee figures that I've ever had the pleasure to handle. I really do think that Hasbro and Takara completely knocked it out of the park with this particular release. The colour scheme is on point, all of the remoulded elements look amazing in both vehicle mode as well as robot mode and they've just done so much retooling to this figure that it is merely the transformation and a few components such as the fires and the lower sections of the legs that are a direct carryover from a previously released figure. You can see as we turn around to the back I don't think that the backpack looks too obtrusive whatsoever and of course you can remove it we are unsure as of yet whether or not this figure is accurate to the show as of course Earthrise hasn't as of yet aired on Netflix we've only just gotten chapter one siege and Bumblebee had a very different look to this but just taking a look at the details I think that that head sculpt is absolutely marvelous you can see we've got the traditional horns that stick up from either side of Bumblebee's helmet all of the sculpting and detailing there to the head the silver plate for the mouth and the nose as well as the really nice blue painted eyes. No Autobot insignia on the center of his chest, however, if you've watched the most recent chapter of War for Cybertron, you'll know that he doesn't indeed have an Autobot insignia on his chest, and I doubt that he's going to have one in Earthrise either. The arms here are a direct carryover of that of Cliffjumper, but I think here with the new color scheme really do look coherent with the rest of the sculpt. And then as we turn down to the crutch, the crutch is once again a carryover, as so as all these pieces, but the feet are completely brand new, as so are the wheels. Just an absolute amazing looking figure. In terms of articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so it can look left to right as well as up and down ever so slightly. We get full 360 rotation here at the arms as well as hinge out to the sides. Full 360 rotation here at the bicep. A 90 degree bend there at the elbow. We do get full 360 rotation here at the wrist. Full 360 rotation here at the waist. The legs can kick forwards that far as well as back that far, they can also do the splits. We also have some fire rotation, a 90 degree bend there at the knee, and then finally the feet are on these incredible ankle rocker hinge joints, allowing you to really splay the legs of Bumblebee out to an incredibly wide degree. So that for articulation, for such a small figure, and I'll bring out some comparisons with some other releases later on in this review, is absolutely terrific. In terms of integrating some of the accessories, you saw here that Bumblebee does come with this huge bazooka, and just to show you how that looks in the figure's hand, you can see that similarly to that of cliff jumper the bazooka is so large and really does look rather goofy when posed next to bumblebee but it's such an awesome accessory and of course if you wanted to you can break it down into its individual components so you can separate all of this and have him hold the much smaller parts of the weapons or what I like to do is actually take the gun that we get in the deluxe centurion pack that is specifically designed for bumblebee and use that for the figure and this I just think looks so awesome this is definitely how I'll be displaying bumblebee on the shelf the blaster looks so g1 accurate very masterpiece-esque in its design and this figure to me I just really have no words for it I'm so pleased with what they've accomplished here with this release when it was announced I was ecstatic and now that I have the figure in hand I'm just absolutely blown away this is an amazing release now much like you could do with the Earthrise cliff jumper you can indeed remove Bumblebee's backpack if you so desire and use it as a shield so you can simply just utilize that peg and have Bumblebee wielding his backpack in order to deflect enemy firepower however for me I always thought that this looked rather goofy and always preferred it on the backpack but I just thought that that is an option that you can certainly do and with the weapon that we do indeed get with the accessory pack I just think that this is such an awesome figure. For a quick mold comparison, here I have Bumblebee compared to that of Cliff Jumper, and you can see here definitely the similarities in terms of their overall designs. However, something which I didn't notice until getting this figure in hand is how many parts have actually been remolded and re-sculpted for this Bumblebee. So you can see that the torsos are completely different, the head sculpts are of course completely different, the entire arm section is exactly the same, and that is for both sides. However, of course, for Bumblebee it has just been cast in a different colour plastic. The crutch area is the same as well as the fires and the shins, but the feet are completely different. It's merely just the transformation and certain elements that have been carried over nowhere near as much reuse as I initially thought that we would get here and you can see on the back I think Bumblebee's backpack sits a lot more flush on his back compared to that of Cliff Jumper. Both fantastic releases, really awesome updated versions of their characters. And in terms of my personal favourite out of this type of transformation, Bumblebee for sure wins hands down. Now turning to a controversial comparison, here I have the new Earthrise Netflix Bumblebee compared to that of the drastically more expensive Movie Masterpiece 2.0 version of Bumblebee. And in my personal opinion, I prefer the new Netflix Earthrise Bumblebee. And that's for many reasons. This figure is so much more enjoyable to handle in both robot mode and vehicle mode. The transformation is a lot more enjoyable. He feels as if though he's made out of firmer plastic than that of the official masterpiece. I think that the paint applications on this one are better. 
shoulder. This one had some issues in terms of matching the paint applications. And this one here, I just think, looks and feels so much better. This one's a lot more enjoyable to handle. And you can see that the more expensive Masterpiece version has huge feet, whereas I think that the new Earthrise Netflix version handles that a lot better. The backpack is more compressed on the new Earthrise version. And just as a whole, for me, I just would always go with the Earthrise version over the Masterpiece. And here for a quick Earthrise Autobot size comparison, you can see here that I think Bumblebee fits in so nicely along with the rest of the cast. I don't necessarily think that he's 100% to scale to what we see in the Transformers War for Cybertron series. As you can see here when comparing Bumblebee to Wheeljack, in Chapter 1 of Siege, Bumblebee does look as if though perhaps he should be roughly here on Wheeljack, but Bumblebee has always been the smallest character, and of course we don't know how he's going to look once we get round to Earthrise. And just in general, I think that he does scale really nicely with the rest of the team, so for me, the scale here is not an issue whatsoever. I think that it's great that we finally have a Bumblebee and honestly Earthrise has just been absolutely knocking it out of the park with each of their releases. I have loved almost every release from Earthrise so far, so much so that I'm actually more anticipating the Earthrise releases than I am for the Studio Series releases and for those of you who are longtime supporters of the channel will know that I was always so diehard on movie figures but now I'm slowly starting to shift as Earthrise is just giving us such quality releases. Now turning to reverse transformation to begin with we're just going to want to remove the backpack, take the peg here and just compress it into this cavity, set that off to the side for now, come to these sections here and just hinge those out to the sides and then we can bring these sections down and fold out the wheels. Repeat the same process here, so collapse that down, fold down the wheels, come to this piece and you're going to want to take the arms and fold those backwards on both sides, take this piece here, detach it from the main torso, lift this piece over the top of Bumblebee's head sculpt and then compress this down. Now what I recommend doing is taking this and pulling it back ever so slightly so that the tabs can easily tab in there. There is some slight friction on this but once it locks in there it's firmly solidified and isn't going anywhere. Now that that's completed we can rotate the waist around and you're going to want to lift this up whilst at the same time according all of this stuff to the back. It can be rather finicky to do I must admit so I recommend pushing that down then lifting these sections up and then pulling this all back and around to the side. So just compress all that and then come to this side and repeat the same process. So in line that all up and bring these back. And you can see here that there is indeed a small tab that will peg into a slot here and the same can be said for this side. So just snap those into place, come to these sections here, clip those into place, align all of this up and you can see that these two tabs will peg into those grooves. So snap those in and then you'll just want to take these and compress these doors into the legs. Once that's done, we can then bring in our backpack and you can see two ports here and here that will peg into the pegs on the hands. Just align these up and then shoot the hands all the way in to the pegs. Repeat the same process here for this side. Just shoot all that in align everything up nice and securely and here we have Bumblebee back in his amazing looking Volkswagen Beetle mode. So that just about wraps up my review for the Transformers Netflix Earthrise War for Cybertron Deluxe Class Bumblebee. If you haven't guessed already from this review, I quite honestly believe this to be one of the best War for Cybertron figures that I have ever picked up. And that's not just me overhyping the figure because we finally have a Bumblebee in the collection. Whilst that may add on to some of the hype, I just think that in general this is an astounding figure. Vehicle mode is absolutely flawless. I have no criticisms with the look of Bumblebee in his vehicle mode whatsoever. It's a fantastic recreation of a Volkswagen Beetle. So G one and looks even better than the official masterpiece. The transformation is identical to that of Cliff Jumpers, so if you have that figure you'll know what to expect. The plastic on this figure feels fantastic despite its minute size. Hasbro and Takara have not skimped out whatsoever on the plastic. The paintwork is tremendous. The colour match is terrific. It's one of the best colour matches that I've seen ever on a mass produced figure and he's just barrels of fun. I just cannot say any more about this figure than I already have. If you're a War for Cybertron fan then you're definitely going to want to add this one to the collection and if you're a Bumblebee be fan then there's no doubt about it this is one of the best bumblebees to be released in years and i'm having an absolute blast imposing him around and transforming him so that just about wraps up my review i really do hope that you enjoyed my look at the new earthrise netflix bumblebee if you did please do let me know down in the comment section below and until my next review i'll see you then thanks for watching